to. Pete Dunn versus Kyle O'Reilly with the winner to get a title shot against Finn Balor at New Year's Evil. And as you mentioned last week, Kyle O'Reilly absolutely deserved this shot. What did Pete do? He lost a war game, so what he did. Yes. So there's this giant brawl beforehand, because Birch and Lorcan are out there, and they get attacked by Killian Dane and Drake Maverick, and Roderick Strong and Adam Cole join in, and now Brizango is out there. And I can't really keep track of what's going on or who's fighting with who, but if I'm doing the math, they all hate Lorcan and Birch, which means it's basically a six-on-two beatdown. Eventually, they all leave. The match begins. The two guys just stand in the ring, staring at each other, as six numbskulls are having this giant pull-apart brawl outside the ring. Now, I want to go back to the stipulation here. All right. This is a little thing. If you want to say it's nitpicking, that's fine. But this is what I think. If you win the goddamn war games, and you do the bombs away knee drop, and you get the pin, and you won for your team... Bro, you're the number one contender for the title. If you're on the other team, and your team is solidly, roundly defeated, no, you do not deserve a chance to get a title shot here. So, what I would have done, which is just like, it's a little thing, but whatever. Instead of saying it is a number one match, or number one contender's match, instead of Basically saying, it didn't matter whether you won or lost war games. You're both going to get an opportunity to fight for the title. I would have said at the beginning of the show, Kyle O'Reilly is the number one contender. Kyle O'Reilly is very upset at Pete Dunne. They're going to have the match tonight. And Kyle is putting his number one contendership on the line. That's the easiest thing in the world. Fine. Yeah. Fine. The way that they did this... Where you go through the trouble of doing a fucking war games, Mm -hmm. one side beats the other, and then it's like, well, one of you from each team is going to have a match to determine who gets the championship. It's like, well, who fucking cares who won? There was no value to winning war games Yes, by signing these two to just a number one contenders match. You're both at the same level. If Pete Dunn wins, he gets the title shot and Kyle gets jack shit, even though he personally won war games. When War Games ended, I thought, well, went a little long. Pretty good match, but now what? And the answer to now what is nothing. We're just starting fresh. And we're just giving Pete a, a, a chance to win a title shot just because. Match itself was pretty good. Did not need to Pretty go good. I thought this match was <laughs> fucking awesome. The middle portion of the match was very slow. The, the third act was awesome. It went through two commercial breaks to tell you how long it was. And after the second commercial break is when it got really, really great. All sorts of submissions, subtle things like uh, 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 Dunn is going for some move and Kyle blocks it by reaching his hand behind his back and grabbing his own trunks so that he could not get hammerlocked, which is a brilliant little thing. And Kyle regal plexes him right on top of his head, hits the same jumping knee that broke Finn Balor's jaw, but at least Pete Dunn had a mouthpiece in. Mouthpiece in. It still gets knocked out. There's a funny spot where they're fighting on the apron and... Uh, <laughs> I think O'Reilly went for a DDT, but the camera doesn't follow them, so you just see them fall off the apron and into, disappear into the abyss. They just fall away. I don't know what happened. And then shortly after that, O'Reilly throws it back into the ring, hits a bombs away to the back of the neck and pins him. I should hope so. A bombs away knee drop to the back of the neck should never, ever, ever be kicked out of. This match was awesome, dude. This was the best match of the night on either show. The whole match was great. You must have fallen asleep or something or been looking up some fucking football stats. They grappled early. It was great. They pummeled each other, hither and yon. There was a suplex on the head that was way too dangerous. I could have done without that, but you could do the suplex. Just Pete doesn't on have to be the head. on the top of his fucking head. I'm the thing Especially when the idea is you're trying to pin the guy. His back yeah, needs to be on the exactly. ground, not his fucking it's head. Like, it, it, the, the, a regal plex, if you don't know, it's a suplex with a cradle. You're trying to pin him. And you can't pin his head. I mentioned so, yes. on Observer Live. Actually, I mentioned on every show I've reviewed this on. I'm still annoyed by the advertisement that you would get uninterrupted bell-to-bell action in this match. Because we didn't. There were two commercial breaks. Which led me to think that maybe when they said uninterrupted bell-to-bell action, what they were actually saying was, nobody will run in once the bell rings. Which, in fact, nobody ran in once the bell (laughs) rang. So, if that's the case, to me, if you're going to go out of your way to advertise to people that we promised there won't be run-ins, 
That kind of tells me that you know that people fucking hate Mm run-ins, so maybe you could just not do them. You could just not... It's fake, guys. You can have your show not to have run-ins in it. Yes. I don't think they know how to book without run-ins and interference and any of that. There is a main event in the show, Brian, where this becomes a relevant discussion. Yes. So the rematch is official. They show the graphic. Kyle O'Reilly versus Finn Balor, New Year's Evil, January 6th. Which, is, by the way, is a normal Wednesday night show. It's just a special Wednesday night show. You know why it's hard to book matches without DQs and countouts and bullshit? Tell me, Brian. Because you have to think in advance. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's no forward thinking. I mean, even this show, I hear that they got done planning out the show or whatever like an hour and a half before the show starts. It's like, dude, you got a week. You had a week to book one two-hour show. What the fuck are we getting done right before the show starts for? How hard is this? I mean, it can't be that hard because there's another guy running another promotion that's been doing this a year that's had zero experience, zero experience whatsoever in pro wrestling. And he's managing to do it. What's your fucking excuse? If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.